Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. It is Friday. Uh, not, yeah, sorry, not yet Friday. I'm ready for it to be Friday. I'm ready for it to be Friday because I'm ready to gamble on some college football. Early error on the show here. It's not actually Friday. Fake news. It's Thursday. Don't want to get all your hopes up. You're like, man, this is awesome. I forgot it was Friday. It's Thursday. Uh, it's the Thursday edition of Outkick the Show tonight. NFL Week 3 action back underway. Jets going on the road against the Browns. We'll dive into that. Friday, I got a college football parlay for you. Three games, three winners. I'm giving it out to you today because I want you to have a day to get the bet in. And we're going to talk about ESPN Plus signing up a million people. Interesting story in the world of digital subscriptions, particularly as they pertain to sports. Brett Kavanaugh, go ahead and get this thing underway. I am ready to have the vote. Uh, And Antonio Brown blames the media for reporting on his tweet where he said, trade me then. Uh, All of that we're going to dive into. By the way, I'll be live on Lock It In in a little bit less than an hour. So we got a lot to get to. Uh, But I want to start off here by telling you to go to Sportsbook Review. Go to Sportsbook Review. If you go to Sportsbook Review, you can get hooked up right now. How do you get hooked up? By going to Sportsbook Review, making sure that you get the best possible number anywhere. And if you do, you will be glad that you did. Also, my guys at The Home Loan Expert will take care of if you need a mortgage. My guy Ryan Kelly, anywhere in the country, wipe out your credit card debt, wipe out all of your student loan debt. He can do it in as little as six days. All right, we got a lot to get to. I appreciate all the feedback on Lock It In. It's actually been pretty positive. Audience is growing. It's going to start small. It's going to continue to grow. The show is a lot of fun. Um, And uh, and I appreciate all the feedback so far. It's actually been pretty positive on social media. I anticipate everything's going to be negatively received on social media. By the way, five days until my book is released. Five days. All right? The book will be in every bookstore nationwide. Right now it is $17 on Amazon. I ask for very little from you. I would prefer and hope that you would go out and buy my book Republicans Buy Sneakers 2 which will be out Tuesday. Amazon I believe has already started shipping if you have pre-ordered it. It's $17 right now. I recorded all nine hours. Okay? All nine hours of the audio is entirely from me so if you don't even read if you're sitting around you're like I just like to hear Clay Travis talk you can hear me talk all nine hours for the entire book. All right, So make sure that you get out I want to get this thing on the New York Times bestseller list. It's important to have goals. My goal is to get this thing onto the New York Times bestseller list. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to make the New York Times bestseller list. I'm calling my shot. We are selling a lot of copies but you guys control whether or not it does. I can't buy the copies and make it happen. You guys have to. Republicans buy sneakers too. It is out and I hope that you guys will buy it and enjoy it. Give feedback. If you like the book pass it along to somebody else. There are no coupon codes. All right, The book is $17. It is a hardback book and it is $17. If your ass is too poor to pay $17 for a hardback book then go follow somebody else. All right. If you can't afford $17 for a hardback book then you need to go do something else with your life. You need to be working right now instead of watching me sit here and talk to you. You should be making money right now instead of wasting your time during the day listening to me. If you don't have too much if you don't have dollars uh uh-oh uh-oh is that an insult? Is that an insult using a poop emoji? Guess what? You're gone poop emoji guy. You're dead. If you're the kind of guy who uses a poop emoji you probably are a total loser. You're probably the kind of guy walking around claiming that you're a member of the resistance wondering what in the world is going to go on like that. I I had to kill poop emoji guy. Don't be a grown man who uses poop emojis. Bad move. Bad move loser. Uh, $17. If you can't afford it Work. Work on getting a better job if you can't afford a $17 book and you're asking for coupon codes. Uh, All right, Jets Browns tonight. I think this is highway robbery. I'm tipping you off on my picks here. I and lock it in which is going to be on in like 45 minutes. I can't believe you. I can't believe right now the Cleveland Browns are 132 and 1 
in their last 34 football games. They are playing a Thursday night home game against the Jets. And right now you can get the Jets plus three and a half some places. The Browns may win. The Browns may even cover. But if you are betting on the Browns to cover in this game I'm sorry, you are insane. Hugh Jackson came out and said we don't feel any pressure. And I heard that and I thought how does he not feel pressure? I feel pressure for the Browns. If I was 1-32-1 and and one, I would be loaded down with pressure. The pressure would be so intense on my shoulders that I would barely be able to stand up. When Hugh Jackson says they feel no pressure I'm like why don't you feel pressure? You're making millions of dollars a year to win football games and you're not actually being able to win anything. The under is the play here and the Jets if you can get them plus three and a half is the play. Thursday night football lock it in I'm going to give you more logic for it in an hour on FS1 a little bit less than an hour okay? Friday night Tomorrow there are three big college football games going on. I am going to give you a fun Friday night parlay. Many of you are going to be like me. You've got kids. You're going to finish the week. You're going to have high hopes and you're going to end up sitting on the couch with a beer on your hand watching late night college football on Friday night after your wife and kids have already gone to sleep. And you're going to be thinking to yourself man I got a wild life This three-game parlay that Clay Travis talked me into betting is making my week. All right, So let me give it to you right now. And by the way if you are doing that and you are a single guy you need to recalibrate your life. If you're not doing that and you are a married guy you're probably going to get yourself into trouble. All right, Just tossing it out there. The three-game parlay which is going to hit I'm telling you right now the over. The over in Central Florida FAU. FAU is going on the road against Central Florida. They're scoring 41 points a game. Central Florida is scoring 46 points a game. The over is going to hit with ease in this game. So take the over. Right now it's around 75 or 76. I actually gave it out to the VIP at 69 and a half. It's gone up almost a touchdown. We almost have a middle in this game. Second game. Penn State is going to beat Ohio State next week. And by the way Nick Bosa important news if you are following college football Nick Bosa had surgery in his abdominal area sounds like it might be hernia related and he is going to be out for a while he's not going to be able to play against Penn State for sure Penn State is going to beat Ohio State in two weeks okay a little over a week now but they are not going to be geeked up to play on a Friday night in Champaign, Illinois against Lovey Smith's crew okay I'm telling you right now the play sorry Nick Nick Bosa Joey Bosa whatever it is the Bosa's the Bosa guy in Ohio State right now not the one who got drafted that's Nick right? Joey Bosa is with the Chargers Nick Bosa's with Ohio State don't let me get nervous over here by saying some comments like I'm messing things up All right, Gonna happen they're going on the road okay they are going on the road and as a result they're not going to be that psyched up about it. You can get them at almost 28 right now. Now I don't want to hear from odds maker guy. Go to sportsbookreview.com you can see there's like a bunch of different lines available. Around 27 and a half that's a great line right there. I wish I could give pluses. Nobody circles the wagons on Friday night like the fighting Lovey Smiths and the Illini in front of 25,000 people in Champaign, Illinois. I'm telling you it's going to be popping And the line four touchdowns on the road in a Big Ten game is too much the week before a massive game when you're playing a Friday night game. All right, so that is happening. That's two legs of our three-game parlay. Leg one, everybody write this down, FAU-UCF over. Leg two is going to be fighting a line eye covering 27, 27 and a half, 28, the best number you can find. Leg three, Leg three, we're going out to the West Coast. I just saw this number and I said to myself, you got to be kidding me. Got to be kidding me. Washington State is plus four and a half on the road against USC. Third leg, Steve McNair is a very good line there. Washington State plus four and a half on the road against USC. That's my three-legger. 
All right, are you listening carefully? The three-leg play as follows. One, listen closely, the over in FAU-UCF. Two, Penn State does not cover. Illinois covers big spread. Penn State wins by 14, gives you an easy cover. And three, Wazoo, leaving from Washington State, traveling down to SC, Friday night game on the Trojans, plus four and a half. We are going to hit on this three-game college football parlay on Friday night. And you know what I'm going to ask you to do? When this three-game college football parlay party hits, I want you to just tweet me and just hashtag respect the picks. Because Fox Sports PR took a shot at me this afternoon. They said Furman's 8-0, but you can bet with Cousin Sal and you can bet with Clay Travis if you need to. But we're starting off with a three-game parlay All right, three game parlay, all three of those hitting. It's Friday night. Now some of you knuckleheads who are watching or listening to this show, you're going to be out there and you're not going to have paid attention to me and you're not going to realize the parlay I just gave you a day in advance is for Friday night. So repeat after me, this is Friday night. These are not Saturday games. These are Friday night games. Make sure that you get them in and you are ready to roll there. Okay, that is going to happen. And then I'll give you a Saturday parlay tomorrow. Tomorrow on the show, I will give you a Saturday parlay to play as well. But you're going to hit that three-gamer on Friday night and be rolling into the weekend rich off your ass. Tap the veins, boys. Let's have some fun on Friday night. Respect the kicks. The Respect the picks. And the kicks. I got great shoes. Uh, all right, I want to give credit to ESPN here. I don't know what kind of jujitsu they're doing with the numbers, but one of the big questions that's been out there in the world of commerce is this. How many people are going to sign up for an over-the-top uh, sports subscription service, right? And the only sports subscription services that have worked in a big way, uh, the only sports, oh, we got to get a special guest. Special guest, come here. Come here. Come see me. Come say hi to everybody. We got a special guest. Uh Uh-oh, it's Spider-Man! It's Spider-Man! Oh, wow, what an outfit. Nash is ready for Halloween. Oh, no, wait, it's not Spider-Man, it's just Nash. You say hi to everybody? Spider-Man, Dad's office is open, so Spider-Man can always come upstairs. Nash just turned four. You say hi to everybody? Who's nicer, Dad or Mom? Peace. Oh, that's a good answer. It's a good answer. Love you. All right. You want to sit here for a little while or you want to go back? I see. I'm going to have a nap time. Oh, it's nap time now. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Tell everybody bye. All right. Nash says bye. Spider-Man says bye. There you go. (laughs) Bye. Um, All right. So I didn't know Spider-Man was going to come on during the show. Uh, the benefit from being able to work from home is that I'm around my kids all the time. It is pretty awesome. I do the radio now from home. I do the Periscope and the Facebook now from home. I do the, uh, the television show from home. So uh, everything takes place all day long from home, which is, uh, which, is, which is pretty good. I do need a nap time. I'm jealous all the time of everybody who gets to take naps in this house. Like I, sometimes when the kids go down, like he always fights like every kid does going down for a nap. And I'm like, man... I would kill to get to take a nap right now. I would absolutely kill to be able to lay down for a couple of hours and just tune out. And uh, I don't get to do that. But, grown-ups, grown-up, more money, more problems, as uh, the great philosopher uh, Notorious B.I.G. first said, I think. Uh, Or maybe it was Socrates. I can't remember who said it first. But, ESPN Plus. Now, they rolled in. Let Let me take a break here for a sec. I am a huge proponent, all right? I'm a huge proponent of the concept of a nap. I think that naps are probably the most underrated thing that adults should do that we don't do. I try to take at least three days a week, given how early I start. I try to take a 25-minute nap. I started doing these in law school when I would work all day and I was tired, and especially first year of law school when it's a really high stress and you got a lot of studying to do and a lot of things to pick up. I think the nap is one of the most undervalued things in all of American life. 
if you can take like a 30 minute nap in the afternoon, can't sleep longer than that. You sleep a couple of hours, you lose like your focus, you sleep for an hour, you haven't slept long enough. The pop is, the sweet spot, is right around 30 minutes. If you can train yourself to knock out 25 to 30 minutes, I'm telling you, it's the best thing that can happen in your day. And I've been arguing this for a while. If you work hard or work a lot of hours, I think that company productivity would increase if everybody turned off the lights like they used to do in kindergarten and for 30 minutes everybody had to stop everything. All the lights go off, everybody lays down on their mats, lays down on their couches, and everybody sleeps for 30 minutes. You're less frustrated, your brain works better, you recalibrate, you reset everything. I'm telling you right now, if you are not a nap guy or a nap girl, got to get on the nap train. Got to get on the nap train. If I had a normal office job, here's what I would do. I would go out for a 30-minute lunch and I would live close to wherever my office was and then I would go to my home for 30 minutes, knock out for 30 minutes. You feel like a million bucks by the end of the day. Uh, so I just I woke up from a nap a little while ago. 30-minute nap, boom, I'm out, back up. I'm telling you right now, it's amazing. Um, this guy says, America wasn't built by napping men. Wrong. You're wrong, actually. They used to, uh, historically, if you study this, it's fascinating. All of the guys, first of all, they used to be connected to the day cycle, right? So people used to sleep a lot more than they do now because we didn't have electricity. So what they found was how many hours do you need to sleep and everything else. So I'm telling you right now, what they used to do was go to bed once it got dark. They would wake up in the middle of the night, sometimes work for a little bit longer, then go back to sleep. Uh, I'm telling you, naps during the day, one of the most underrated things you can do. All right, back to ESPN Plus before we got a quick visit there from Nash um, and his Spider-Man outfit. He loves Spider-Man, by the way. I bet I have watched every Spider-Man movie a hundred times now. He would watch all of the Spider-Man movies all the time, every day. He's already ready for Halloween. He, you just saw him. That's a brand new outfit he just bought. Um, I'm telling you right now. Uh, the question has been, how many people will pay up for subscribe subscription-based models? So far, the only subscription-based business models that have worked are 24-7 sports, Rivals, Scout, and that's all been predicated on paying money to be able to watch, uh, to be able to watch your favorite teams recruiting, basically, right? If you pay $99 a year or whatever the math is for a subscription there, what you're usually doing it is so you can obsessively follow recruiting. Uh, and so I'm curious on this. Do any of you uh, subscribe to ESPN Plus? If you subscribe to ESPN Plus on either Facebook or uh, Twitter here, Periscope, I'd like to see whether or not you subscribe. Um, now, what they did do was they took everybody who was an ESPN uh, subscriber through um, ESPN Insider and they rolled them in. Now, I believe they charge like $5 a month. Am I correct in this? One of you guys who's a subscriber can tell me. It's $5 a month. So when you're talking about them having a million subscribers, I would think that the answer would be that they're getting $60 million off of those subscription basises. And if you are a subscriber, and I'm curious, uh, if you are ESPN Plus subscriber, why did you subscribe? I'd like to see your answer of why you subscribed over here on the, uh, on the side. Why did you choose to subscribe? They've actually been buying a lot of rights. I think UFC, um, I think they've got CFL, I think they've got the Ivy League, um, and they have a bunch of different unique content that's not good enough for television. Uh, so you watch a small local university, uh, Maryland. Uh, yeah, no, it's interesting. Um, it, it is interesting. Um, yeah, well, we've got a lot of subscribers now, thousands, uh, into the several thousands of OutKick subscribers for $99 a year. We've never done a monthly cost because my thought was if you do a monthly cost that you uh, get a lot of people who show up and just kind of run roughshod over everything and then they disappear. Uh, and also it seems like a diff more difficult schedule to try to figure out how to pay and everything else. But some people have said I should be doing a monthly subscription, but we just do a yearly. Um, and so, uh, But I'm intrigued to see exactly how it goes. Uh, I think the UFC was a good move. Now, the challenge is how big can they get? I'm a subscriber to a lot of different subscription services, right? I've said this before. I'm a subscriber to uh, the WWE, subscriber to Netflix. We have normal Comcast subscription on uh, cable and satellite. Uh, we subscribe to Hulu. We subscribe to Amazon Prime. 
basically, if you can pay a monthly subscription, I pay it uh, if part of my family. We don't uh, otherwise do it. So, um, so this is interesting. Uh, and, uh, and I think, uh, I think this, is a, uh, this is an intriguing move. I don't know how many people are regular subscribers. I don't know how many people will stop subscribing when their favorite part of the subscription is no longer necessary. But I do know that UFC people are incredibly loyal. And I think the way to grow a subscription-based model would be to grab whoever the most loyal fan bases are. And UFC people love the UFC, right? NASCAR people love NASCAR. A niche sport that doesn't get a lot of national coverage, it seems to me would make a lot of sense for a subscription like this. Does that make sense to you? Like, in other words, if you are a UFC fan, people don't talk enough about the UFC, okay? And if you are a WNBA fan or whatever it is, uh, or NASCAR, they don't talk about it enough. I think that could make a lot of sense, and I could see why people would love it. All right, so uh, this is a story worth following. Wall Street Journal wrote about it. Uh, I want to talk about it. I don't know what the ceiling is for their subscription base, but I do know that they're losing a lot of money right now because they're only making $60 million a year on revenue from a million subscribers. And they probably need to make 10 million subscribers in order to even break even on what they have spent all of their money on. Okay? So pay attention to that. Uh, we got an interesting story here. Um, this ongoing Brett Kavanaugh story fascinates me. It fascinates me because it is utterly ridiculous. The more I read about this, the crazier I think it is. I think it could be the culmination of the end of the Me Too movement. Because effectively what is being argued here as a part of this argument as a part of this case is if someone makes an allegation which in no way can be confirmed by anyone, okay, anyone out there at all, it can delegitimize you 36 years after the allegation. It's uh, this to me is 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 utterly ridiculous. I think there are a lot of people out there that, uh, that believe as I do, who are both Democrats and Republicans. I think if you are a guy and you were a teenager at some point in time, you have probably been at a party where a guy thought a girl liked him, where there might have been alcohol consumed, and the guy tried to make out with, her, with a girl, and like she shoved him off and she slapped him. He denies this ever happening, but even, and by the way, he says it never happened and it's completely made up. But what I always go to is the particular facts of a situation. Okay, I go to the particular facts of a situation and I say, okay, even if you believe everything that she said, okay, is this a crime? The answer to me is no. I don't believe anybody would have ever prosecuted this case. Okay, I don't believe anybody would have ever prosecuted this case in 1982 it wouldn't get prosecuted in 2018. And if it did, they were juveniles. And we believe that juveniles should not be responsible for what they did, right? Once they reach the age of majority. So the more I have, the more I have this story play out, and it's unclear if she's going to be willing to testify, I think that this case needs to be completely put away. And I think the way you have to look at this is, Let's assume, and this is what I said on the show the other day. You can go watch me talk about this for 30 minutes. But when I look at cases like these, I say, okay, let's assume that everything she is saying is 100% true. Okay? Let's assume that he never denied it and that everything she is saying is 100% true. It's still not a crime. This is not a crime. It would not be prosecuted. Even if everything she said is 100% true. And so that's the standard I would apply if I were a senator. I think this is different than Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill because there was a clear sexual harassment aspect to that. But to me, you accept the truth of everything that she is saying even though he has denied all of it and even though there are witnesses saying that what she alleged never happened. Even if you assume the truth of everything that she said, it's not a crime. It wouldn't be prosecuted. It's not sexual assault. I don't think it's simple assault. I think most jurors out there sitting on a jury who heard this case would say, yeah, this is really awkward. I wish it hadn't happened. There's a difference. I agree with Matt Damon. Remember when Matt Damon came out and said, 
this Me Too movement's a little bit out of control. We have to acknowledge nuance in everything. And when you talk about the Me Too movement, you have to acknowledge, Matt Damon said, there's a difference between grabbing... <coughs> excuse me. There's a difference between grabbing a girl's ass and raping her. Right? That's what Matt Damon said. And everybody in Hollywood attacked him and he had to come out and say, oh, I take it back. I apologize. There is no difference. Like, basically, he had to walk back what he had said. Yet our entire criminal justice system is built on the concept of there being a difference in behavior, right? We don't just have murder. We have first-degree murder. We have second-degree murder. We have manslaughter. We have involuntary manslaughter. We have all these different ways that humans can kill each other because we acknowledge that there's, it's ridiculous to have a bright-line rule. Well, we've got to stop calling everything attempted sexual assault or sexual assault or whatever else. Like, if a girl is at a bar and a guy walks up to her and grabs her butt on the dance floor, that's inappropriate. It's not criminal. I could certainly understand why she might want to turn around and smack him in the face. I can certainly understand if that was your girlfriend or your wife, why you might shove the guy and maybe even get him kicked out of the bar. But there's no way on the planet that you charge him with a crime, right? There's no jury. Like, we, that's not a crime, okay? There's a difference between uncouth behavior and criminal behavior. There's also a degree of criminality. And so I talked about the way I've discussed so many of these different stories over the past couple of years. We had the Peyton Manning mooning incident. We had the Ezekiel Elliott domestic violence investigation. We had the, uh, the Jameis Winston alleged, uh, alleged rape issue. A few years ago, we had the Duke lacrosse case. All of these different cases move together. And a lot of times what I think is disappointing is many people believe that you should all, you know, come out and say, oh, you got to be on the woman's side or you got to be on the man's side or you got to be on the black guy's side or the, black, or the white guy's side or the white girl's side or the black girl's side. No, I'm telling you right now, that what we have to do is look at the individual facts in each case. And whether you are a Democrat or a Republican, to me, this Kavanaugh case is absurd. It's the height of absurdity. I think it could be a little bit like back in the McCarthy hearings when finally everything just broke, accusing everybody of being a communist. There was a sense of, have you no sense of decency? There's a difference between Harvey Weinstein and Brett Kavanaugh. In fact, they're not even in the same remote arena and trying to tar Brett Kavanaugh with this at 53 years old, something that happened 36 years ago, is to me crazy. The vote should happen, he should be confirmed, and he should go sit on the Supreme Court. Now, I don't agree with everything Brett Kavanaugh believes. I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-gay marriage. I don't know what his position is on either of those. I am anti the death penalty. He probably supports the death penalty. But I'm also of the belief that elections have consequences and this is the kind of Supreme Court justice that is the best kind of justice that could be picked to sit on the Supreme Court. So I don't think there's any doubt at all. Um, and somebody said, what about Merrick Garland? Well, elections have consequences. Every Democrat and every Republican knew in 2016 that whoever was elected president was going to get to pick the next Supreme Court justice. And Democrats didn't show up to support Hillary Clinton. So, period. That's the truth. And they followed the rule that Joe Biden made up. And they also followed the rule, the Republicans did. They followed the precedent of having the, uh, of having the nuclear option wiped out and eliminating the possibility of filibuster. So, Mitch McConnell, I think back in the day, said, Harry Reid, you may come to regret this decision that you have made. And it took only a couple of years for Democrats to re re regret the fact that they had replaced the nuclear option there. So, I got to tell you, this is a uh, this is a ridiculous situation. The Republicans are still going to have the Senate in uh, in after the elections in the midterm. I think they're even likely to pick up seats. I think the, the Republicans will win a seat in Missouri that's a Democrat seat right now. I don't see very many seats that might get flipped. Might happen in Tennessee where I live, but at a minimum, the, the Republicans are still going to have the Senate after the midterms. Finally. I'm sick of people blaming the media when they create stories. Antonio Brown came out and blamed the media for covering his tweet where he said, then trade, then trade me then. Uh, trade me then. Um, you can't blame the media when you send out a tweet that turns into a massive story. That's on you. I don't think there's any doubt at all. Uh, I appreciate all of you. I got to go do my television show. 
please go buy my book, Republicans Buy Sneakers 2. You can get the audio version or you can get the book version. Both are available right now on Amazon. I love all of you uh, and I appreciate all of you for spending your time with me. In fact, I appreciate you enough to tell you, hey, you just spent some time with me. How about flip it over to FS1? I'll be on in 30 minutes there hanging out with my guys, Todd Furman, uh, Cousin Sal, and Rachel Bonetta. Should be a lot of fun. DBAP boys and girls, but it's important to note, SBAP also applies sometimes. I'll see you guys. This has been Outkick the Show. Go to Sportsbook Review. Buy my book, please. Republicans buy sneakers too. And I will see you guys tomorrow, and I'll also see you in 30 minutes on your television. I'll be dressed in a suit. I'll look beautiful. See y'all then. Bye.